Stacey, thank you very much for joining us My on Trade Finance Talk TV. My pleasure. Great to have you here. Here we are live in Frankfurt at the BAFT Global Annual Meeting. So to start off with, could you give me a quick introduction? Who are you? For those of you who don't know, where are you from sure. and what do you do? Absolutely. Um, so I work for BAFT as the Senior Vice President, specializing in the trade finance world and trade finance business. Um, I see myself as an, an ambassador for trade. Um, and my background is actually in banking. So I've been at BAFT now for six and a half, almost seven years. No, it's about six and a half years. And in those six and a half years, I've come a long way. It's a big transition when you leave a bank and you go to a trade association. My whole thought process in doing it was going from one organization to go to the, an organization that supports the industry and not just one um, FI. So it was very exciting for me to get that opportunity. And so I've been able to do some really great things since I've been here, developing uh, guidance, papers, et cetera, um, doing education and training, doing conferences and workshops. So it, you know, it's, it's a good gig. Yeah, absolutely. No. <laughs> um, but I did want to let you know that I did work 20 plus years at J.P. Morgan Chase, um, and I was in sales and product in a risk distribution. I set up their risk distribution business, and the last job I had was operating risk manager. Great. So a huge, uh, huge wealth of experience across the trade finance industry, which is incredibly mm -hmm. useful for your current role at BAFT. So let's take a look at 2019, quite the year for trade, I think. And yeah. we interviewed 20 experts from trade, receivables, supply chains, giving us their, their highs and lows of 2019. And actually, this video interview is going to be about trade finance compliance. And compliance and regulatory themes were extremely patterned in 2019. Could you give a rundown of the top four or five trends and themes that you saw in 2019? So I think the most significant and um, important compliance related issue is that the banks are always being, um, the, the organizations, the regulators, everybody's always raising the bar. Yes. And so every single day, anybody who's sitting in trade finance, that could be a surprise. Um, and you know what? Our job in that situation is to try to find the bad guys. It's a very difficult thing to do. Um, and we are getting guidance from different global associations, global organizations, global regulators, but there isn't always a consistent approach. So um, I'd say the number one issue is the fact that the bar gets raised in terms of what a financial institution needs to do. Mm. And in many cases, it's things or um, identifying issues that aren't even in the purview of a financial institution. And we spend a lot of time talking to the regulators about that, um, about issues related to um, KYC, know your customer, um, money laundering, and talking to not just one regulator, but the regulators around the globe and trying to develop a consistent approach. Um, I would say that is like the number one theme. There's a lot of sub issues in there, um, but I would say that's the most important one. Yes, I think that is a really key theme. And actually, when we spoke to Stephen Beck at the Asian Development Bank, I, I recall him quoting, navigating uncertainty was his biggest theme for 2019. And I guess this uncertainty, has this had an impact within trade finance compliance, whether it be sanctions, tariffs, et cetera, et cetera? The answer is absolutely. Um, the uncertainty, and I was kind of referring to it before because it's really what is expected of a financial institution to do even in the sanction space. And what responsibility does the FI have to identify the bad guys or to make sure we're not doing business with sanctioned entities or sanctioned countries? Um, and an example would be that there would be a um, publication that came out from OFAC, you know, in the last 24 hours, let's say, and it talks about 
um, ship to ship transfer of certain types of products that aren't supposed to move from one country to the other and we're not supposed to support them. Um, and that has happened in Korea in particular. And there was an advisory alert that came out and it was about five pages long. This is a little bit back. Um, and the banks got very, very concerned because it was very hard to understand what their role was in identifying these issues, given that they, are, they deal in documents and they don't really see the ships. And um, are they really supposed to track the ships? Some, some people are pushing the envelope and the answer is yes. However, OFAC, our role at BAF is to contact OFAC and find out why they do things like this. What is the expectations from the FI? So the bottom line was, which was very interesting, they wrote it for the corporates. They didn't write it for the FIs because this is a good way to advise the players who actually are in the water um, dealing with the issues. So it's helpful that the banks knew about it, but it wasn't an additional requirement put on their backs. So that's one thing I would say. Thank you, Stacey. I think that just goes to show the importance of BAFT when it comes to representing the banks and FIs uh, to large bodies such as OFAC. I think, and I recall Stephen Beck held an excellent round table. Can you explain a bit more? Sure, I'm more than happy to do that. On last May, April, May, March timeframe, um, he brought together multiple stakeholders who are um, involved in identifying financial crime, identifying um, compliance issues. Uh, he invited the regulators, he invited the banks, he invited the, some corporates, he invited trade associations like BAF. Uh, Todd Burwell, our president and CEO, uh, was there. And the idea was to bring everyone together to, um, to di discuss the global consistency issue around um, AMLs, particularly money laundering. Right. Mm anti-money laundering, money laundering. Yeah. You have to be careful Not the, the way you, <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful the way you approach it. Yeah. Um, and they identified at least five different themes, and I can remember some of those themes that were quite important. And following that, they had some follow-up take takeaways that has um, actually the the industry has focused on mm -hmm. in the, the latter part of 2019. So um, you know that banks have to file SARS reports, yep. suspicious activity reports. Right now, if you file one for a trade transaction, it's very difficult to put down the information that will really be helpful to law enforcement because it's not detailed enough related to trade. One of the initiatives was to actually rewrite the SARS form for trade, and right. that is underway. Another thing that was uh, focused on was the um, LEI, Legal, Legal Entity Identifier, uh, because of the issues around sharing data and the fact that data is not consistent across organizations, globes, sharing information, privacy issues, confidentiality issues. So there was, um, there's a group that's promoting the LEI. And then there's another group that um, was looking at the trade finance compliance requirements. Um, and we pushed out our trade finance principles paper that we wrote a number of years ago. Um, I say we, it was Wolfsburg, ICC, and BAF. Um, and that was meant to be for practitioners. So what level of due diligence do you need to do on your customers? What level of due diligence do you need to do on your non-customers? Or do you? And who is your customer? as well as at the transaction level. So we looked at traditional trade products, and subsequently this past year, we looked at supply chain products, which was then added to the paper, and it's available uh, globally to anyone who's interested in reading it. Um, and this year, we pushed it out to regulators globally, yeah. and we're hoping to have some, um, some interesting conversations with them once they receive it and, and digest and it. And digest it, I think that's, that's the key there. So I guess moving forwards now into 2020 and perhaps pulling on some of the trade finance compliance themes from that round table, in your opinion, what are the most pressing issues that banks will be focusing on when it comes to trade finance compliance? So I think 
personally that the most significant issue today is around um, identifying the compliance issues through um, technology and financial technology and um, specifically around digitization. There's a lot going on in this space, but um, the banks are challenged with, right today, they are doing it on a paper base. And when they do an analysis looking for uh, a sanction or an AML issue, it's generally done on paper. And that paper becomes extremely cumbersome. And it's also challenging because there's so many false positives that come out. So a lot of the banks have identified some fintechs and also developed some programs with the fintechs to do OCR, um, as well as um, just identifying more broadly the sanctions names. The whole idea is to reduce the false positives, because there are millions of transactions that pass through these organizations every day, and all of the global banks have focused on this. And I think there will be a point in time where the regional bank will start looking at it as well. Thank you, Stacey. And I think it's very important, the, the potential for, for fintechs and fintech bank and bank fintech collaboration within, within financial crime, um, within trade finance compliance, et cetera. I guess my next question is around the end customer. So whether that be the corporate, the supplier to the corporate, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And we do seem to be in a bit of an arms race between the regulators, uh, the rules, the compliance checks and, and the sanctions requirements, et cetera, yes. uh, and, and the banks complying with those and, and the fintechs and technology companies running to keep up with that. Is that at the impediment or, or loss or are there unintended consequences, do you think, on all of this? on the end customer? So um, the answer is yes, but I'm not going to say it's a silver bullet. But I think um, one thing that we need to focus on better as an industry is um, identifying all the stakeholders that can play a role in identifying financial crime issues. And one of the papers that BAF wrote way back in the day, which is combating trade-based money laundering, rethinking the approach, is suggesting um, that there become a better partnership between the public sector and the private sector, bringing in other entities like customs, like shipping, to identify, to help the financial industry identify. FIs see only one part of the transaction if they get paper. So it's very challenging if they're if they're only doing uh, open account, they're not seeing any paper. But if even if they're doing uh, not doing open account and doing traditional trade, they're only seeing the transaction. They see the flow of the funds, but they don't actually see the movement of the goods. So it's hard to ask them to follow a ship from its beginning to end and to make sure it doesn't go through Aban Abbas, you know, in, into waters that they're not supposed to go in and you have to not make a payment or not do a trade deal. Mm. If there's any um, nexus to a, um, you know, a sanctioned entity. So it's challenging. We need the help. We need a global, we need, it takes a village. That's what I would say. So 2020, let's build a village. I think so. Um, I think one of my most important objectives, and it will continue, is to take the uh, conversation around trade-based money laundering around the globe to the regulators. One place we're going to start first is in the U.S. The intention is to um, try to bring all the regulatory bodies together um, to sensitize them even further on the issue. And help them to develop this public-private sector partnership. We have the relationships with the FIs. They have the relationships probably with customs and, and the shippers, et cetera. So mm -hmm. together we can build that village. Stacey, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on Trade Finance Talk CV here at BAFT's annual global meeting in Frankfurt. Thank you very much. And I look forward to catching you soon and keeping updated on what's going on. This has been my pleasure. I love to talk about this industry. <laughs> so thank you for the invitation and I look forward to the next one.